Evan, let's just start with you. Give us your reporting. Take us through what happened here. Well, Allison and Victor, until now, we haven't been able to tell this story. That's because uh, until just a short while ago, uh, this has been sealed under a federal court order uh, preventing uh, CNN lawyers from telling the story uh, of what was a months-long protracted legal fight with the Justice Department over their demands for months of uh, the email records belonging to CNN's uh, Pentagon correspondent, Barbara Starr. Now, this is a fight that was going on, again, in secret, over a period of months, and it continued even while uh, a judge told the Justice Department that, quote, their reasoning was speculative and uh, unanchored from the facts. Let, let's, give, let's go through a, a timeline of the legal fight so you can see how many months uh, the CNN legal team was fighting with the Justice Department. It begins in July of 2020 uh, when the Justice Department, when CNN's legal department receives a, an order from a judge from the Justice Department saying uh, that they want two months of Barbara Starr's email records from 2017. Now, this includes, at the time, a gag order that prevented uh, uh, Dave Vig Vigilante, our, our lawyer, from discussing any details of this with just a limited number of people. Uh, in September of, two, of 2020, CNN uh, goes to the court and asks uh, for this order to be narrowed because the initial order was for tens of thousands of emails and included uh, email records that were internal, not having anything to do with any government official that may have been the subject of this leak investigation that this was all about. In October, uh, the federal judge, uh, Theresa Buchanan, uh, tells the Justice Department that they should narrow the order. A couple of days later, again in October, the Justice Department returns to the judge with secret information that CNN's lawyers could not even see. and. Uh, persuades the judge to reissue this, uh, this demand for, for Barbara Starr's email records. Uh, in November, CNN appeals to another judge, and in December, we finally get a, a different result from uh, federal judge uh, Anthony Tringa, who sides with CNN's effort to narrow the scope of the Justice Department's request. I'll read you just a part of what the judge says. He says, quote, the requested information by its nature is too attenuated and not sufficiently connected to any evidence relevant uh, to any evidence relevant material or uh, useful to, to the government's ascribed investigation, particularly when considered in light of the First Amendment activities that it relates to. Uh, in January of, 2015, uh, of 2021 now, we're the last few days of the, of the Trump administration, the Justice Department goes back to the judge and asks for the judge to reconsider. Uh, his order because he is saying that CNN has a point to, to narrow the scope of this request. Uh, and then uh, after Joe Biden becomes president on, John, on uh, January 20th, uh, finally the Justice Department sits down with CNN and hammers out an agreement, which is done on January 26. Uh, under this deal, uh, CNN was able to produce a limited number of, of email records, essentially records that the government already had from uh, uh, its side of, of these communications. And that's when uh, that fight finally ended. In May last month is when the Justice Department finally informs Barbara Starr, who has been kept in the dark through this entire uh, fight, by the way. Barbara Starr is finally notified that not only has the Justice Department obtained its CNN, her CNN email records, but they've also obtained records for her private and work cell phones, as well as her private email. This is something that CNN's legal team was completely in the dark about uh, until this letter that was sent in mid-May to, to Barbara Starr. That's about the time that the Justice Department also informs reporters for the Washington Post and the New York Times that their records had also been sealed. Again, a very extraordinary uh, legal fight that has been going on for months behind the scenes. In secret, nearly a year long. Evan, thank you for that. Let's bring in Brian uh, Stelter now. Stelter, so many questions, but let's start here because we know that CNN is not the only news agency that has been um, the, the, the subject of these, these efforts from DOJ. Right. We learned last Friday that the New York Times had also been placed under a gag order, that lawyers at the Times were in a similar situation, but for a shorter period of time. So now we are learning that CNN was also subject to a gag order, that our top lawyer was silenced and for an even longer period of time. This is a stunning revelation about the government spying on journalists and trying to do it 
so that even the journalists and the bosses cannot know. I mean, number one, spying on journalists is an affront to the First Amendment. This has been a problem in the Obama years. It was a problem in the Trump years. Now President Biden is vowing this will end because it's so embarrassing. But this has been a problem for years. That's true. Now, number two, the idea that the journalist lawyers can't even talk about the case, can't even inform the journalists, that is something extraordinary, incredibly unusual. I mean, let's just put it this way. The words gag order don't belong in the same sentence as the words news outlet, right? Our job is the opposite of, of silence. Our job is to speak the truth and try to figure out what's going on so we can tell the viewers at home. When these leak investigations uh, end up going after our sources, our confidential records, and when these leak investigations end up gagging lawyers, I think everybody should be concerned about whether that's a Justice Department abuse of power. And then we take it one step further, given what we experienced in the Trump years. The New York Times, CNN, and The Washington Post were the three outlets where there were these secret subpoenas to try to get a hold of journalist records. Those are three outlets that President Trump bashed at every turn on every occasion. Is that a coincidence? Hmm. Was he, was his administration targeting these news outlets? And is this the result? Look, I think, frankly, here we are in June of 2021. We're starting to learn what happened in the Trump years. All fair questions. So, Evan, I mean, since this has been going on so long, why are we just finding out about it right now at this hour? Well, the uh, Biden administration, the Justice Department under Merrick Garland, uh, said that they were doing a review of some of these uh, cases. They knew there were a number of these. And so at the end of that, you finally saw uh, just over the weekend them making an announcement that's saying that they're no longer going to be taking this extraordinary step in leak investigations. Leak investigations are still going to be going on, but this comes at the end of a review that they said they were doing. Brian, um, you mentioned that the Biden administration says that they're not going to continue this. Are, 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 are we certain that this is now over? Well, one of the so, so only in the last few weeks did President Biden say he put a stop to this. And that was only in response to a question from our colleague, uh, Caitlin Collins, mm. when the news about Barbara Starr initially came out, that her records were seized. Uh, now we're learning even more about this gag order. Uh, and let me read from the New York Times, uh, the, the CNN story about this. The Trump administration's unwillingness to negotiate the total secrecy, this is something that media lawyers are going to be studying for a long time because it is so unusual. So it's embarrassing for the government. It's a revelation that's going to have shockwaves. And now the Biden DOJ is going to be under pressure to put this into practice and to make this codified so that it's not just the Biden DOJ vowing not to seize reporters' records, to go through their phone logs, trying to find their sources, but to put this into, into practice for future administrations. Uh, right now, this is just a Biden DOJ promise not to, not to engage in this practice if journalists are gathering the news. And of course, you know, the Biden DOJ could find a way around that language as well. So there's a lot of concern in newsrooms that the Biden DOJ needs to show how they're going to live up to this promise. And we do know that next Monday there is a meeting scheduled between Attorney General Merrick Garland and representatives of CNN, The New York Times and The Washington Post in an attempt uh, to, to discuss this matter and try to bring tensions down. Because, listen, I've been talking to media rights lawyers, advocacy groups. This is something that has been uh, of deep concern in the last few days before we even knew there actually was a gag order involving CNN. But I mean, Evan, as you were just saying, this Biden took office in January. Has the Biden Department of Justice moved with enough alacrity to resolve this? I mean, this has been slow. And again, the only reason why we're talking about this today is because a judge, CNN went to a judge and asked the judge to lift the gag order that has been pretend, pre preventing uh, David Vigilante, the, the CNN lawyer, from even being able to tell uh, more people than just a very limited number of people. And so that, it's been a very slow process. And, and Brian's right, you know, the, 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 this is a policy that is applying only to Merrick Garland's Justice Department. Once he leaves, you don't, we don't know what the new rules will be. This is uh, something that is frankly just uh, just for now. And so the question that I think going forward is going to be, is there going to be long-term difference or long-term change in the way the Justice Department uh, handles these things? I can tell you real quick, uh, the inside the Justice Department, there's a lot of anger at, uh, at the Garland uh, announcement that they were curtailing these types of uh, seizures of, of journalist records. 
national security uh, officials there don't feel that this is a, a, a right step. They think the national security is going to suffer because of it. Uh, but I think what they're failing to understand is, is, is just the fact that some of these lawyers that have been doing this did not use their own prosecutorial discretion to do the right things in these cases. The gag order is just extraordinary, especially when it comes to a media organization that exists to tell the people what's happening in, in their government. Evan Perez, uh, thanks for that breaking news. Brian Stelter, thank you as well.